Good morning. Today, the topic that Spirit has given me is Jesus and the New Age. Yesterday I received a letter from, from a lady. I looked for the email through all the emails that I received yesterday, most of which I have not answered yet. In any case, she said, I am a Christian, but I, I do watch your YouTube videos. And even though I've been warned about the New Age, you speak with a lot of wisdom. I don't remember her exact words. But the Spirit of God is upon me to speak to you in, from a place of wisdom. And I'm going to make fundamentalists happy this morning by actually referring again, I've done that in other videos as well, to a scripture. This one is from the end of what we know as the Holy Bible, in the 21st chapter of, of the book of Revelation, which is also known as the Apocalypse, just for your information. But there's a, John is receiving a vision of the new heaven and the new earth. And he sees one sitting upon the throne, I would assume that that's the living Christ that's sitting on the throne. And he said, he that sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. And he also said unto me, write, for these words are true and faithful. I was raised in the assembly of God. And as a teenager, I attended a church on the corner of Broadway and Summer Street in Patterson, New Jersey. It was the largest assembly of God church in the state of New Jersey at that time. It was also located in the middle of a black ghetto, predominantly black ghetto. Every summer, we would have a, an outreach program where we would go around door to door, passing out tracts, gospel literature, what we called gospel literature, and we would invite people to our church. But the instructions baffled me as a young teenager, and I didn't understand why we were told and instructed that if we came upon the house of a black family, which again, this is a predominantly black neighborhood, we were to give them the literature, but not invite them to our church. That hurt me in my heart. And I didn't understand. So what I did is I went out into the streets immediately surrounding the church. And gathered up some young children with their parents' permission, of course, black children. And I started my own little Sunday school class act out back behind the church. And I don't remember how many weeks we did that, but it was one of the summers when I was just a teenager. And I had my own little Sunday school class of little black boys and girls that would come and I would talk to them about Jesus. They didn't give me a place inside the church to do that. They didn't stop me, but they didn't give me a place inside. And we used to sing a song called, Give Me That Old Time Religion. Makes me love everybody. There was something wrong with that picture, and I saw it from an early age, which is why I guess I, I was sort of like seen as a troublemaker by the ministers and the elders of the congregation because I just didn't get some of the things that they were teaching. And I would ask some very difficult questions for them to answer because they didn't have answers. I remember one deacon getting all red faced when he said, are you here to learn? Or are you here to make trouble? <laughs> I think I must've been about maybe 15 or 16 at the time. But I've always been very much involved 
in Jesus, in Christ. Yes, early on in the Bible. Very much so. Very much so. But there was something wrong with the old time religion as I saw it. And, and Jesus said, by their fruit you shall know them. They said the right things many of the times, <laughs> not all the time, but they didn't practice it. Their love was not unconditional. And even as a teenager, even as a teenage boy growing up, I could see that and it broke my heart. It broke my heart to see the people that, that were worshiping Jesus with me and they were unable to love black people or accept black people into our congregation. Throughout my life, I've been in black churches. Sometimes I was the only white person. I love black churches because I love people. And it doesn't matter the color of their skin and it doesn't even matter their religion. And so I invite Christians and Muslims and Buddhists and Jews and Hindus and Taoists and Shintos, and uh, name your religion, the Baha'i, name your religion, it doesn't matter to me. The words from him that sat on the throne, meaning the ruler of the cosmos, that's how I take it. I think that's Jesus. It's certainly a God figure or a divine figure. He that sat on the throne said, behold, I make all things new. Now, I give you a choice this morning. You can either hold on to your old time religion that teaches separation from God and teaches guilt for sexual preferences and guilt for the color of your skin and guilt for this and guilt for that and teaches fear that God is going to punish you forever and ever in an eternal fire if you don't, if you don't get your belief system straightened out. You can believe that kind of stuff if you want. It doesn't resonate with me. And I want you to know that. You can do whatever you want. I'm not telling you what to believe. But I am asking you to examine your own heart and find what resonates with you. As a young boy, I mean, I loved my minister. I loved the people in, in the church, in the Assembly of God church that I went to. I loved them. They were, my, they were part of my family. Bear in mind, my parents stopped going to church when I was 11 years old. It was me. It was me on my own volition that started going back to church, a different church than the one my parents had left. Also, but it was still the Assembly of God. It was still the same denomination. And I got the minister to come and pick me up, and then my brothers and sisters would follow. And we went to church. My parents weren't going to church at the time. In fact, during that period of time, if, if they wanted to punish me for something, the punishment was you can't go to church. <laughs> and I went anyway, sneaking out of my house, out of my bedroom window, crawling across the roof, crawling down the tree and walking eight and a half miles to the church in Patterson, New Jersey from Midland Park, New Jersey. I did it once. Got lots of brownie points with the people in the church. <laughs> lots of brownie points. But I didn't want the old time religion that didn't allow me to love everybody. Not even as a teenager. Not even as a young man. It didn't resonate with me. It didn't make sense. How could these people say that it makes them love everybody when it was obvious to me? that they weren't loving everybody. They were very prejudiced. And I grew up in that environment. I grew up in that environment. But I was willing to go forth unto Christ outside the camp. I left the church so that I could learn about the heart of God and the love of God and how to truly love everybody. And it wasn't an old time religion. It was the behold, I make all things new. It is a new age that we're in. It is the ninth wave of a new age. It's not a new revelation. There's nothing new being revealed. Not really. 
but things are being clarified that have been revealed in the past and misinterpreted and misunderstood. That's happening today in our day and age. So if you're one of those Christians that have listened to your preacher and warned you about the new age, that it's satanic and evil, I want you to consider the fruit. Did Jesus teach separation? Did he give you permission not to love people because of the color of their skin or because of their, because they were a Muslim or a Hindu or a Buddhist or a Jew? Or if you're a Protestant, because they are a Catholic or because they don't speak in tongues or they don't believe in eternal security? Forget, you know, forget all these things. Do they really matter? I'm inviting you to forget them. Let them go. Release them. Because we're here. We're here right now, living in our bodies as spiritual beings. And we're either going to awaken or we're not going to awaken. But what are we awakening to? If it's an old-time religion that is that wears masks and is totally hypo hypocritical, you can have that old-time religion. I don't want it. I don't want it. And yet I love everybody that's in those old-time religions. Even the older religions of Hinduism, Buddhism, yes, Taoism, Confucianism, and even the newer religions of Baha'i. I love everybody because we're all children of God. That's how I see it. That's how I understand it. You can be where you want to be. You can think what you want to think and believe what you want to believe. I'm not trying to convince you, but I am asking you to listen to your heart. What resonates with you? The truth will resonate. The truth will feel good in you. If you're believing a lie, you're going to be in for a rough ride because this ninth wave is going to expose the lies. We've been told lots of them by our religions, by our political institutions, by our corporations. Everything in our society has been twisted around and perverted. But that's changing because the lights are coming on. And more importantly, the love in our hearts is being shed abroad to everyone that has ears to hear. And I invite you to hear, not me, but your own heart, the Holy Spirit within you, the Spirit of the living God that is your true being. Hear yourself, your higher self speak to you. Yes, we're in a new age. It's the ninth wave of the evolution of human consciousness. We're growing up. The children of God are finally becoming the adults of God. And yes, to those in the old time religion, it's new. Is it satanic? Hmm. You be the you be the discerner of the spirits. Ask the Holy Spirit for the gift of discernment. You discern. You discern. I leave you with that this morning. And as always, I send you blessings. And I recognize the divine in you. I recognize that you and I, at the deepest level of our soul, are one with God. In Christ. In the Buddha. East and West, black and white, north and south, we are one. We are one. Unity consciousness in the ninth way. Yes. Have a wonderful day. And God bless you.